This is Trend Following Radio, where great thinking comes alive. Nobel Prize winners, legendary traders, best-selling authors, and the pros that know what drive us irrational human beings. I am your host, Michael Covell. Not filtered, raw, honest. That's my passion. I love that verse from Joe Walsh. I have a mansion, forget the price. Ain't never been there, they tell me it's nice. I live in hotels, tear out the walls. I have accountants, pay for it all. Those damn CPAs, they keep everybody in business, huh? CPAs, attorneys, they allow the cover for the great scams of Wall Street to unfold. Today, I'm going to talk about one of those scams, what we can learn from it. But first, a blast from the past. Because I will guarantee you, any scam that takes place today in 2016 We've been there before, seen that, done that, been there before, nothing new. Let's go back to the early 2000s. For some of you listening, you're not going to recall 15 years ago, but Enron was this fantastic company. Perhaps you've seen the documentary on Netflix, pretty cool documentary. But Enron was one of the biggest, best companies. They were making an absolute fortune. Turns out it was all fake. They had their CPAs paying for it all. Their attorneys paying for it all. It was all a hidden scam. Hell, they even went to the point in their Houston offices, in their gleaming office tower, to have a fake trading floor. One of the biggest companies in the world at the time actually hired actors to appear to be trading to convince the Wall Street morons, the Wall Street moronic investors, that this was all real. As they went ahead in the back room and cooked the books, changed the numbers, it was all 100% fake. Let me read an excerpt from my book, Trend Following, which I think will put today, 2016, into an even nicer light. The Enron debacle is stunning when you consider the losers. The number of investors who deluded themselves into thinking they were on a path to quick riches is incalculable. From the portfolio managers of pension funds and university endowments to individual investors, everyone was caught up in the exhilaration of a company that seemed to go in only one direction, and that was up. Owners of Enron's stock never stopped seeing the pot of gold. They were quite willing to look the other way and suspend their disbelief to celebrate a zooming share price guilt-free. However, there was a big problem. They had no strategy to sell when the time came and the trend turned. All good bulls die, whether they're scams or not, whether people admit it or not. And please go back and find the Enron stock chart It's famous. But there was only one key piece of data needed to judge Enron, the share price. At its peak, the company's stock price traded at $90 a share, but it collapsed to 50 cents a share. Why would anyone in their right mind with a modicum of intelligence hold on to a stock that goes from $90 to 50 cents? Even if Enron was the biggest scam ever propagated, must we not take to task the hopeful investors who held all the way down to 50 cents a share? Don't blind investors bear responsibility for not selling? The chart was telling them the trend had changed. And to interject here on my own book, if you will recall, Jeff Skilling, the CEO of Enron, He got out at about $50 a share. I believe the chairman, Ken Lay, is dead. Skilling, I believe, is in lockup still. But he got out at $50 a share as it proceeded to go down to $0.50. So $90 to $50 to $0.50. Now let me read some of the comments from some of these investors. David Brady 
Steinro, focused fund manager at the time, admits to making a bad bet on Enron. Quote, where did I go wrong? If I learned anything, I learned the same old lessons. The numbers just didn't add up. If you had looked at the numbers, the balance sheet would have showed you the real problems. End quote. More examples. The Kansas Public Employees Retirement System had about 1.2 million invested in about 82,000 shares of Enron stock. Quote, it was based on Enron's spectacular earnings growth, and many analysts recommended it as a hot stock. End quote. Can you think of any reason why that guy had a job then and has a job today? Now, do you really think that's changed in 15 years? If you have money in a public employee pension fund, do you really think the twits, the zeros, the morons in charge of that have a clue? Are you deluding yourself? Let me calm down and continue. Another great example, the retirement fund for the city of Fort Worth lost nearly a million in Enron. The teacher retirement system of Texas first invested in Enron in June 1994. It realized a net loss of approximately $23 million. Jim Sims of Amarillo, a board member for six years and chairman of the board, said, quote, We're human beings. When you're investing money, you'll have some winners and you'll have some losers. You can't protect yourself when you're being fed inaccurate information. We had all the precautions in place, end quote. That's a great line. He's right. You'll have some winners and you'll have some losers. But when he says that he was being fed inaccurate information, what is inaccurate about the share price going from $90 to $80? to $70, to 60, to 50, to 40, to 30, to 20, to 10, to 5, to 1, to 50 cents. What the b is inaccurate about that? We had all the precautions in place. What precautions, pray tell, did he have in place? And what the hell is in place? The reality is they had absolutely Absolutely no precautions in place for any eventuality at all. Because they let the damn thing go from $100 to zero. Now, we're all smart people. That's by definition no precautions. Again, in the last 15 years, where do you think all of these fine minds have migrated their thinking to some advanced, new, for example, price-based thinking that if the share price goes from 100 to 80, that maybe we will get the out? No. It's exactly the same. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings me to 2016 to prove to you that it's exactly the same. 16 years separate Enron and Valiant Pharmaceuticals. It's the same damn story. Now, I can't profess to having watched all the news about Valiant Pharmaceuticals and Bill Ackman, the contrarian activist investor who has made himself a fortune of $2 billion by the age of 50. Now, I had to, before this podcast, go in and do a quick cursory analysis of how Bill Ackman makes his money. I do not think there is anything for any of us to learn. He's had very accomplished benefactors throughout his career. He's had large pools of money to invest. And he has typically gone after companies where he thinks there might be a really interesting angle. It's not buy and hold. It's not trend following. It's not value based on what I can tell. It's more of an activist, contrarian approach. Again, he's made himself a fortune. But in the example of Valiant Pharmaceuticals, I have a sneaky suspicion we're going to learn a lot from what has happened. And I have to give Tyler Kling from Macro Ops a little bit of props 
for reaching out to me. He said, Michael, I really enjoyed the Powerball podcast. You brought lots of emotion and energy to the show. You have been able to crack the podcast nut, in my opinion. So many people out there have decent info, but they are boring to listen to. You bring the material and the electric mood. I'm trying to incorporate your presentation style into my market situation videos to make them more entertaining. Let me just interject one thing here before I continue reading Tyler's very complimentary email. I wouldn't copy me. I would just be who you are. Be exactly who you are. That's going to win people over. Tyler continues, I wrote this article recently on Bill Ackman and what we could learn from his valiant blow up. I tied it back to having a risk point or stop out on everything you do, a core tenet to the trend following style. Although I'm not a pure trend follower, much of my trading strategy is designed off of the trend following framework, i.e. frequent small cuts with huge wins. And Tyler goes on to ask for my feedback on the Valiant Ackman situation. Well, the feedback actually has become this podcast because he inspired me once I went ahead and I started to read about this Valiant Ponzi scheme and I started to think about Enron. I was like, damn, what are those great reminders? They're there all the time just waiting to come out and surprise us. Let me go over a quick timeline of this wonderful company, Valiant, which has dropped... I'm looking at a chart here from something like 250 to 30 in a couple months. 250 a share to 30 in a couple months. What does that mean big picture when a company can drop from 250 a share to 30 in a couple months? It's bullshit. 100% bullshit. Now what's interesting about 100% bullshit i.e. Valiant, is how many people can be fooled. Like the examples I read from my book, Trend Following, from 15 years ago, the Enron investors, the timeline that I'm about to read to you includes those very same investors updated to 2016. Well, they're not exactly the same, but their words are the same. Here we go. The Valiant Pharmaceuticals Timeline February 23rd, 2015, thestreet.com. I'm quoting, Kramer maintains investors can still buy Valiant at this point, and he actually feels more strongly about that now. Even though many want to buy Salix because of the acquisition, he says the stock to buy is Valiant, even though the stock is at $200 a share. And there we have the start. The start of Valiant and the absolutely meaningless fundamental information that people were using to measure this dog with. Kramer's made himself a fortune, hundreds of millions of dollars. He's on the TV every day. But a year ago, he wanted you to buy Valiant stock at $200 a share. And today it's at 30. Now, what makes you trust Kramer today? Continuing. May 7th, 2015, J.P. Morgan, and I'm quoting, we see Valiant positioned for significant top line and EPS growth over the next three to five years, driven by continued execution on the core portfolio and several new product launches. What were those product launches, by the way? A fucking scam? A fucking Ponzi scheme? Is that the new product launch? The new product launch. Fuck you, customers. We're stealing your money. There's the new product launch right there. Thank you, JP Morgan. I should calm down. Moving on. In the Valiant timeline. Oct- <laughs> uh, that probably, I, I wish there was video for that. I probably looked a little psychotic for a moment as I uh, nailed uh, JP Morgan for their insanity uh, of what they call so called research. And again, Fundamentals, 100% useless. And if it's useless on Valiant, how do you know it's not useless on the next dog they recommend? Yeah, good point. Thank you, Mike. Yes, I will think about that. I guess I should not be talking about myself in the third person. That's always odd. 
I had a girlfriend tell me once not to do that. I don't think I do that on a regular basis. I do it once in a blue moon. Tangent over. October 19th, 2015, on an earnings call with analyst, Valiant CEO Pearson says the company will ease up on its strategy of buying up drugs it thinks are mispriced and hiking prices. Also that day, a story from the Southern Investigative Reporting Foundation is the first to detail the odd ties between Valiant and Philidor, a rapidly growing specialty pharmacy that appears to be controlled by Valiant, but had never been disclosed to Valiant shareholders. See, when they do these schemes, there's always a bunch of shell companies and nonsense going on that if anybody bothered to pay attention, they would see it. But no one cares because there's so much money to be made when a Valiant goes from basically, you know, zero five years ago to 250. People just make a fortune. Brokers, Wall Street makes a fortune. And they make a fortune by putting you in these dogs. I mean, they get the commissions. So they make a fortune by putting you in these dogs. They keep saying it will never go anywhere except up. I'm sure there were Wall Street so-called professionals telling their high net worth clients to buy more Valiant at 250 a share. Guaranteed. The October 19th story continues. The story says that R&O Pharmacy, an affiliate of Philidor, has sued Valiant, saying it believes the drug giant may be the target of fraud or engaged in fraud itself. One day later, October 20th, 2015, a report by Citron Research run by activist short seller Andrew Left who is actively shorting Valiant, boy, he's made a fortune, reveals more information about Philidor and its network of phantom captive pharmacies. Left accuses the company of accounting fraud and compares it to Enron. Wham, bam, Ken Lay, Jeff Skilling, we are right there back again in the year 2000. Again, none of this stuff changes. The names change. Enron, Valiant, they might as well have been kissing cousins. Now, October 22nd, Valiant calls this report erroneous. It says it hasn't used Philidor to book fake sales. Boy, this is what you want to hear about from your shining light investment. And oh, by the way, I've not mentioned Bill Ackman again since the beginning. Bill Ackman's been invested into this nonsense. He's got a massive billion plus dollar position in Valiant. I'll get to him in a second. And so right around that October 22nd period, Valiant shares plunged 30% in just a few days. Citron Research calls Valiant's relationship with Philidor the turd in the punch bowl. Yeah, 30% drop in a few days is definitely the turd in the punch bowl. So when you have such a massive drop in a high-flying company, dead people are now walking. You're now going to start to find out who had all their money in this dog. Around November 2nd, 2015, Business Insider, I quote, Bill Ackman's Pershing Square Capital has lost close to $1.9 billion on paper this year on its valiant bet. Much of those losses have happened in the past two weeks. Shares of valiant crashed more than 40% since the Citron report. And Business Insider goes on to also say, quote, suggesting Valiant may be operating as an Enron-like fraud, end quote. Now, since I've mentioned Enron, I want to go ahead and compare some language from the CEO of Enron with dates to the CEO of Valiant, Michael Pearson. First, Jeff Skilling, February 14th, 2001. Now, mind you, Enron cratered was a complete scam, went to zero, and skilling is in jail. It is unfair to us and unethical if you don't take the time to understand our business. We are doing it purely right. People who raise questions are people who have not gone through our business in detail. Roll forward. Valiant CEO, May 28th, 2014. Quote, so again, it is unfortunate that Allergan has not taken the time to understand our business. There is a number of inaccuracies in the report that was put out yesterday. They are just factually incorrect. 
I like this idea of comparing quotes from two CEO scam masters separated by 15 years. Kind of cool, huh? Continuing, Enron CEO Jeff Skilling, February 14th, 2001. Enron is a very simple model. It is a logistics company, not a trading company. Valiant CEO, May 28th, 2014. Valiant is more like a professional services firm than a sort of traditional pharmaceutical company. Continuing, now this is Enron CFO Andy Fastow meeting with Fortune Magazine, February 15th, 2001. Enron's disclosure is more complete than anyone's, end quote. Bill Ackman, conference call hosted by Pershing Square, his firm, July 17th, 2014, quote, I will also point out that Valiant gives massively more disclosure about its business and did so prior to this transaction than Allergan, end quote. And one final comparison, Enron Chairman Ken Lay, in an email to employees August 2001, quote, I've never felt better about the prospects of the company. Our growth has never been more certain, end quote. Valiant CEO, July 31st, 2014. As we look across the entire business, I've never been more confident about the growth trajectory across the entire company, end quote. As I mentioned at the beginning of this podcast, Bill Ackman is an activist contrarian investor. You can go read all about Ackman and his Herbalife investment. He will go over the top and beyond and so far very successfully to try and get the company that he's invested in to go the direction that he wants it to go. It's worked very well for him. Except on Valiant. February 17th, 2016, Pershing Square's Bill Ackman has increased his stake in Valiant Pharmaceuticals by over 30%. According to a February 5th filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission, Pershing added nearly 1 million shares of Valiant to its portfolio since the fourth quarter of 2015, increasing its stake from 8.5% of the company to 9%. The bump comes after Ackman's apology to investors in a January letter where he wrote that it was a mistake not to sell Valiant in the summer when the stock rose above 200. Who am I to go ahead and beat up a man who, around the age of 50 years of age, has made $2 billion? But for the rest of us, what can we learn from Bill Ackman and his investment in Valiant? It does not appear... He had an exit plan or a stop loss. Maybe he did and for some reason did not execute it. Maybe he has some other strategy that we are not privy to. But who cares? If you're in a stock and it goes from 250 to 30 and you still own it, you've really screwed up. There is absolutely no reason you should be in a stock that goes from 90 to 50 cents, and there's absolutely no reason you should still be in a stock that goes from 250 to $30. That's simply bad strategy. And that's just on what I know. Behind the scenes, I have no earthly idea. And when one refuses to exit from such a steep drop in any investment they might be in the middle of. It's all ego. It's 100% ego. Let me continue with the timeline. February 29th, 2016. SEC probe launched on Valiant. Stock goes to new lows. March 15th, 2016. Earnings released for Valiant. The stock gets killed again. March 18th, 2016, the CEO Pearson sends a memo to his staff reassuring them that the company will not go bankrupt. The price of Valiant's debt had fallen to 76 cents on the dollar, roughly meaning that investors believe there was a 24% chance the company would not be able to pay back its creditors. Quote, I want to apologize directly to each of you for the distractions this intense scrutiny is causing you. Pearson wrote in the email to Valiant employees. A few days earlier on its earning call, Pearson acknowledged that Valiant has become a tough place to work. 
And my final timeline point for this particular podcast, occurring late March 2016, Ackman is apparently going to take a board seat on Valiant Pharmaceuticals. I thought a great way to sum up Valiant Pharmaceuticals, Bill Ackman, and what has unfolded so far is to read a nice excerpt from Dr. Steve Sugarood, editor of True Wealth. I know Steve. He's been very complimentary to my work over the years. Very, very smart guy. Again, this is from Steve Sugarood. Quote, Bill Ackman is supposed to be the best of the best, the brightest of the bright. He graduated from Harvard. He also earned his MBA at Harvard. Today, he's a famous hedge fund manager. But last week, he lost $1 billion in one day in one stock for his investors. The thing is, he should have never been in this position. If he had followed a simple trailing stop to limit his risk, he would have taken profits. Instead, one of the smartest people on the planet held on and hoped. Are you guilty of holding on and hoping like Ackman? Or are you smart enough to never let a small loss become a big one? This is the most important question, one you have to get right in today's market. The stock Ackman lost $1 billion on one day is pharmaceutical firm Valiant Pharmaceuticals. The stock peaked in August at more than $260 a share. Today, the stock is around $28 a share, a near 90% free fall. Ackman held the stock from the peak all the way down. He is still holding it. Too bad for his investors. I want to excerpt a few more lines from Steve's work. Why do something so foolish? It could be that Ackman wanted to prove that he was right, more than he wanted to protect the investor money entrusted to him. And he still won't give up. Quote, We continue to believe that the value of the underlying business franchises are worth multiples of the current market price, end quote. He told his investors about Valiant in a letter last week. Quote, We are going to take a much more proactive role with the company to protect and maximize the value of our investment, end quote. As Steve says, translation, I'm digging my heels in. Ackman has a history of digging his heels in. When he told Bloomberg TV in 2013 that he was down $400 million to $500 million on his bet against nutrition and weight management company Herbalife, he told the reporter that he was going to stick with the trade to the end of the earth. And there are other similar stories in his history. You and I might not beat Ackman in an IQ test, but we should be able to beat him in the markets. You must be smarter with your money than Ackman and limit the impact of your bad decisions to small losses. Limit your downside and don't ever make an excuse that you are smarter in just this one trade. There is no excuse. And again, that was from Dr. Steve Sugarood of True Wealth. I can't find one thing that I would disagree with Steve about and his analysis of the Valiant Pharmaceutical Ackman situation. So whether you are in the year 2000 or the year 2016, whether it's Enron or Valiant Pharmaceuticals, it doesn't matter. A scam is a scam. And the only way to protect yourself, because you can't know every fundamental, you can't know if what you are seeing supposedly is a Ponzi scheme or not a Ponzi scheme? You will never know. One of the biggest downsides to fundamental information. But you can sure as hell know that if a stock like Enron goes from $90 to $0.50, cents, you screwed up. You can sure as hell know if a stock like Valiant Pharmaceuticals goes from $250 a share to 30 you screwed up. But Mike, how do I know? The first step to knowing how do you know is to give up on the idea that you can know. You can't know. That's the whole damn point. Mike, this doesn't make any sense. It makes all the sense in the world. You can't know the fundamentals. You can know the traded price. 
You can know the traded price. We can all see the traded price. It's the only freaking truth out there. Everything else can be fake. A fake trading floor, a fake CEO, a fake dog. The whole damn thing is fake. But the traded price is not fake. That's real freaking money. You can get in and you can get out. Check your ego at the door, have a stop loss, and don't screw up. I see a time when those awake will understand how to make money in up, down, and surprise markets. Whether new trader or experienced, college student or financial advisor, protecting against a crash or just trying to make a lot of money, Trend Following offers everyone an answer in uncertain times. To get started immediately, send me an email, michael at covell.com. I will send you the right trend following steps to take along with my free video. But if you want to buy and hold, trust the government and trust Wall Street. This is absolutely not for you.